The subject this week is integration of rational functions. However, before I get to those techniques, some setup is required. So this is the first of four setup videos. You may have noticed that most of the integration techniques are not direct. They don't entirely solve integrals. Instead, they reduce integrals to other integrals that we already know how to do. This is very typical in mathematics. Many of the solutions we find are just reducing a complicated problem to a simpler problem that is already known. And to that end, this video is going to be about a few specific integrals. Later in the week, I'll reduce more complicated integrals to these specific ones. So let me start with these three integrals. These were all mentioned in Calculus 1. The first is the inverse power rule, but expressed for x to the r in the denominator instead of the numerator. If you write this as x to the negative r in the numerator, this is just exactly the power rule in reverse. The other two here were known integrals from the tables. Since the derivative of the logarithm is 1 over x, the integral of 1 over x is the logarithm, and the absolute value is there to extend the domain to negative numbers as well. And likewise, since the derivative of the arctangent function was 1 over x, 1 plus x squared, the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared is the arctangent function. Starting from these three, I want to extend each of them a little bit. First, let me consider any integral of 1 over x plus a, where a is a constant. By using the substitution u equals x plus a, with du equals dx, since the derivative of the substitution is 1, I can change the integral into 1 over u. And then I can use the known antiderivative of 1 over u to produce logarithm of absolute value of u plus a constant. Finally, I reverse the substitution to get ln of x plus a plus c. Now, instead of just knowing the integral of 1 over x, I know the integral of 1 over x plus a for any constant a. I'll do the same thing again, but now for higher powers of x plus a. Again, a substitution changes this into the integral of 1 over u to the n, and that was one of the three integrals I started this video with. The antiderivative, using the inverse power rule, is negative 1 over n minus 1 times u to the n minus 1, plus the integration constant. Well, then I reverse the substitution and replace u with x minus a again. And now I know the antiderivatives for any positive whole power of x plus a in the denominator. The previous two integrals covered all possible powers of linear polynomials in the denominator of a function. Now I want to consider quadratics in the denominator. And I'm going to do two different integrals of this type. First, I want an integral where I have a quadratic x squared plus ax plus b in the denominator, and I have exactly 2x plus a in the numerator, and a and b are again any real constants. This integral is perfectly set up for the substitution u equals x squared plus ax plus b. The derivative of the substitution is 2x plus a, so du is equal to 2x plus a dx. This means that the entire numerator can be replaced with du, and the denominator with u. And then the result is a logarithm integral again. The antiderivative is the natural logarithm of the absolute value of u plus c. And then I replace the substitution, and the antiderivative of the original integral is the logarithm of the absolute value of the quadratic plus a constant c. Finally, I have one more integral to do with quadratics in the denominator. Here, instead of having a nice 2x plus a in the numerator to make a substitution work, I'm just going to have 1 in the numerator. For the denominator, I'm going to write the quadratic in the form x minus alpha squared plus beta squared. This is sometimes called the vertex form, and is what you get after completing the square for a quadratic. I'll consistently use alpha and beta instead of a and b for the constants in vertex form, and a and b for the constants in the usual form. I'll assume beta is non-zero. If beta is zero, then this is just 1 over x minus alpha squared, which I've already talked about in this video. In this case, a substitution will also work, but it's a fair bit more complicated than the previous substitution. The substitution that works here is u equals x minus alpha over beta. The derivative of this sub substitution is 1 over beta, so du is 1 over beta dx. If I multiply by beta, I get that beta times du is dx, and then I proceed with the substitution. To set up the integral for the substitution, I'll divide numerator and denominator by beta squared. Multiplying or dividing numerator and denominator by a non-zero value preserves the fraction, so the value of the fraction has not changed by this operation. Then I'll pull the constant 1 over beta squared out of the integral, which is allowed by linearity. I'll also simplify the denominator a little. 
then I can do the substitution. X minus alpha over beta becomes u, and dx becomes beta du. From this point, I can pull out the beta again by linearity and cancel off one beta from the beta squared in the denominator, leaving one over beta in front of the integral. What is left is an arctangent integral. The antiderivative of one over u squared plus one is the arctangent of u. And then replacing the substitution gives the final answer for this integral. One over beta times the arctangent of x minus alpha over beta plus a constant c. Let me recap. Using substitution and three integrals I already knew from calculus one, I've now calculated four new integrals. These are the integrals with linear and quadratic polynomials in the denominator, and constants, or for the one case, a 2x plus a, in the numerator. These are more general than the previous results. They allow a, b, alpha, and beta to be arbitrary constants, and these four will be the base cases for the rest of the week. I'll spend the rest of my time trying to reduce other more complicated integrals to these specific four special integrals.